Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday held bilateral meetings with Indian and Iranian representatives in St. Petersburg. Putin told the Indian Prime Minister's advisor on national security, Ajit Doval, and Iran's Secretary of the Supreme National Security Council, Ali Akbar Ahmadian, that he looks forward to meeting with the leaders of both countries at the BRICS summit in October. He also proposed separate bilateral talks with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Iranian President Masood Pazeshkian on the sidelines the summit in Kazan. He was keen to brief you about his visit to Ukraine and his meeting with uh, uh, President Zelensky. And he wanted me to come specially and personally and brief you about the talks. The talk was in a very close format. It was only the two leaders. He had his two persons with him. I happened to be with the Prime Minister. So I was a witness to the meeting. So I attended that conversation. Сотрудничество с Россией остается приоритетом и для команды нового президента господина Масуда Кеани. И ждем его в Казани 22-24 октября на саммит БРИКС. Думаю, мы найдем время и для отдельной двухсторонней беседы. Мы будем рады видеть его в России и с полноценным визитом, в рамках которого подпишем новый большой межгосударственный договор, призванный закрепить выход российско-иранских отношений на уровень стратегического партнерства. آقای پزشکیان در روی شهر نسبت به روسیه هیچ تفاوتی با گذشته مال خودشون ندارن من باشون چندین بار با مکرر صحبت کردم ایشون قائل به همون حفظ و توسعه روابط هستند A small, largely pro-Trump group in Charlotte, North Carolina gave former President Donald Trump mixed reviews after Tuesday night's debate between Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. If he answers the question, he does fine. If she baits him into something, he'll take it every time. Every time, commented 25-year-old Ross Snyder. 26-year-old Charlotte resident Ryan Hughes had a similar observation. I think that he got baited a couple of times with some of her personal jabs like his rally sizes, people leaving his rallies early, he said, adding, I would have liked to have seen him be calm in those situations, not take that bait. 20-year-old University of Charlotte student Mitchell Gaither said Harris handled the debate better than I thought she would. However, he said she stuck to talking points. He said Trump temperament's a lot calmer. He also said the former president hasn't been as aggressive as in the past. Which I feel like is a benefit. 18-year-old undecided voter Alex Pezelj sounded less than impressed with both Trump and Harris. I feel like they're both not the right candidate for me, 
based on this debate and the past debates. So I'm still undecided, he said. Thank you, because when I hear that, see, I'm a different kind of a person. I fired him. I, uh, I, th I thought it was interesting. He, he didn't really answer the question on abortion. I figured he, he might have, I was hoping he'd try to at least say no on a national abortion ban. And then she, uh, Harris, baited him into the whole rally situation, which isn't his best topic. If he gets, if he sticks to the policy, I feel like he eats him. But if she baits him into something, he'll just take it and doesn't answer the question. If he answered the question, he did, he did really well for about 15 minutes. If he asks the question, he's just fine. If she baits him into something, he'll take it every time. Every time. This is a video. I, I didn't detect the sarcasm. Lost by whisper. He's not the best. <laughs> just because he, he, he's sticking to immigration, which is his best topic. But he's got to stick to what the actual question is and do that. If he does that, he does, he's doing fine. But he's just, she's just going just do a snake round on him for right now. His temperament's a lot calmer. He hasn't been as like aggressive as he was in the past, which I feel like is a benefit. They can write books, but nobody else can they? But they have done such a poor job. Better than I thought, but I still think, you know, she kind of stuck to a lot of the talking points. You know, he would say things like, I don't endorse Project 2025 or something, and she would say, well, you do, but, you know, like, it's kind of like a he said, she said situation. It's, it's complicated. I don't know. I feel like they're both not the right candidate for me uh, based on the, this debate and the past debates. Still, I'm still undecided. <laughs> I don't know how much it's going to move the needle for anybody that still hasn't made a decision yet. I thought they both had good moments, both had bad moments. Um, particularly with Trump, you know, I think that he got baited a couple times with some of her personal jabs, like his uh, rally sizes, people leaving his rally early. She brought that up, I thought, very strategically during the abortion segment. Um, or I'm sorry, during the uh, immigration segment, knowing that that's kind of a weak spot for her. Uh, and so I would have liked to see him be a little bit more... Uh, calm in those situations, not take that bait. During this debate, because we're wasting a lot of time. And, but on the flip side, you know, she had uh, her own bad moments. You know, I thought with the uh, Israel portion, uh, she still has not really been able to commit one way or the other with that. Um, neither is Biden. And I think it's important, you know, when you have a war like that, you need to commit to one side or the other and not try to both sides it, because what you end up doing is alienating both of them. Out of this, she is Biden. She's trying to get away from Biden. I don't know the gentleman, she says.